Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Dadij and today I am going to deliver our last lecture and that lecture is about you, me and the society and democracy. Students, when we live in a society, then we have to have few fundamental constitutional and legal rights. Some rights are for the business few rights are for your personal life. But today what we are going to discuss that is like a mix of a business, mix of constitutional right and mix of your individual rights. So today we will discuss about legal and institutional framework of right to information act 2005. How, how it is relevant for you? Sometimes you think that I am an MBA or a BBA student, I am studying business, so why should I know about right to information? Because directly it is not connected with your business. However, you need to understand that this is a very important and powerful tool available to all citizens in this country. If they want to know anything about the government, their ecosystem, their decisions, then nothing is hidden. And how it is connected with your business? Suppose you are doing business with government. I know that you are a private company, you are going to work in a private company, so nobody can ask any information from you. But when once you start working with government of India or any state government or any public sector enterprises, then all information, all information available to government regarding your business, that is subject matter of public disclosure. Okay? So, that is the first part, then you need to understand that now because of the transparency most of the information citizens can get. Second about your individual and personal life, when we live in a democracy then what we want? We want that our government, our system should be accountable and transparent, but that accountability and transparency cannot come automatically. When we want that transparency and accountability for the government, we need information, we need data, how they are doing, why they are doing, you know. If you have made a complaint to any authority, what is happening on your debt complaint, okay. So that information is the key, information is the key in democracy. So today our lecture will be focusing on right to information and I hope you will enjoy and you will use it. And it is very simple, it is very, very simple to file an RTI, like in normal say we say RTI, you know, RTI activist. It is very easy to file RTI in India and you must file RTIs for your local government, your state government and central government if you want to know what is happening, why my government is not working, what they are doing you can file RTI and government is under legal obligation now to give you that information and that information you can use uh, for your individual life, for your social life as well as for your professional life. So introduction, RTI brings information to the citizens to create accountability and transparency in governance. Without accountability and transparency in gov governance, democracy does not have any value because if you cannot ask question to your government, your representatives, your system, your bureaucrats, then democracy does not have any value. Right to Information Act, RTI Act 2005 mandates timely response to citizens request for government information. So, this timely response is very important key in under RTI law. Because if you go and ask something and if they start behaving like a typical bureaucrat or like government officers and they say, okay, we will give you information, just come after six months 
or one year, we are working on your uh, application, then the purpose of RTI will not be uh, fulfilled. So, in this law, they are under obligation to give you information, at the same time they are under obligation to give you information on time, so timing is very important. So, it is an initiative taken by Department of Personal and Training, Ministry of Personal, uh, Public Grievances and persons to provide a RTI portal gateway to citizens for quick search of information on the details of first affiliate authorities, PIOs and other things. So, now the point is that even you can file RTI online, you do not need to go anywhere, you, you know there are some portals and the central government and uh, state governments and you just go through those portals and you can file RTI online. So, let us see little bit historical background. So, right to information act was enacted in on 15th June 2005. And uh, finally, like oh, this is the process and the important thing that this law applies to all states in India, even Jammu and Kashmir. It is an act of parliament of India. So, this is a central law, this is not a state law okay? and all states are under obligation to respect RTI law. Okay? This uh, is to provide and setting out the practical regime, the right to information for citizens and replace the previously enacted Freedom of Information Act 2002. Under the act, any citizen can request information from the public authority, public authority means a body of government or instrumentally of states which is required to reply immediately or within 30 days. So, this is the first thing, they have to reply within the 30 days and when we say government, government has a larger meaning under RTI law, it is not only the typical government, even the public sector enterprises, ministries and we will see few case laws where even some uh, semi-government types of organizations are also considered government under RTI. Okay? The act also requires every public authority to computerize their records for wide uh, sharing and certain categories of information so that the citizens get minimum resource to request for information formally. So, now the another uh, the idea of the government that why people should ask for RTI. If we can provide information available on website free of course, then people can go and search that information. If most of the information is available on the website of that particular department or the government, then people do not need to file RTI. So, this is the idea that more and more information should be available on website. Objective. The basic objective of Right to Information Act is to empower the citizens. Okay? empowerment of the citizen that is a very key idea, promote transparency and accountability in the working of the government, contain uh, corruption and make our democracy work for the people in the real sense. So, this is very, uh, very, very important words, I will uh, explain them in little bit manner because when I say empower these citizens, what is, what does it mean? that you want to empower your citizens. So, in a democratic country we say okay, you can give your vote, so that is your first empowerment, you can choose your government, but that happens after 5 years. And what about the accountability of civil servants or bureaucrats, because we do not select them, we do not, uh, we cannot remove them. So, when I say government, government does not mean only politicians. Okay? So, in a system, in a democratic system, we have three branches of uh, people, first uh, three branches of power you can say, the first is legislature, the people who are making laws, the politicians, we elect them okay, through elections. Then they make the law, but then law does not happen automatically, someone has to be there to implement the law. Who will implement the law? Executives the civil servants, bureaucrats, government servants, government officers and they normally they come through their exams and training and all these things and citizens have nothing, we have no, nothing to say 
in this selection process, training process or even the you know removal process, they are absolutely outside of the preview of the citizens. The third uh, power center is judiciary. The same thing happens with judiciary that uh, they are untouchable because uh, nobody can touch them. You know this is almost like very difficult. They have got the protection by the constitution and they are protecting the constitution. But at the same time as a citizen I have no right to say anything about judiciary, what they are doing, how they are doing, how they are functioning. So, all these things you can say only one branch is directly or indirectly connected with the citizens. Two branches or two power centers executives and judiciary they are not in the preview of the citizens. So, when I say empowering the citizens means that we want to give power to citizens so that they can ask questions to all branches of the power, legislature, executive and judiciary. And once they start asking, okay, then if you start asking and if you start getting answers, it means that you have got some power. Because right to ask a question, you know right to ask a question and the other party, the opposite party, if it is under obligation to give you answer, that means power. Okay. So, that is that's meaning the power. Second thing is promote transparency. Uh, transparency is very simple. See, government is a very, very complex machine, very, very complex. If you see any ministry, any government, any executive, you see they are working in a very, very complicated manner. They are having so many documents, people work from bottom to the top, they have their own rules, regulations. So, it is very difficult for any citizen to understand the government or the, the ecosystem, how things are working in India. And obviously, that uh, complex nature is required. You know, you know, there are a lot of checks and balances within the government, there are a lot of interesting rules, useful rules and regulations. So, how to understand as a citizen if you want to understand that how the education ministry or the health ministry is working right now, I want to understand. So, you can only understand and say something, contribute something when there is a transparency. Okay. If there is no transparency, if the gates are absolutely closed for you and you cannot enter and see the documents, understand the documents, then there is no use of democracy. Okay. Then it is more like an autocracy. So, that uh, this RTI X promotes transparency. Okay. The government has to open the door. Okay. All the almost all the documents we will see there are few. Uh, government departments, there are few things which is uh, beyond the RTI, you know, national security or some sensitive issues which we cannot allow that people should know because then people can abuse it also, people can misuse it. But you will see almost 99 percent of the government is open now, okay. 99 percent of the government documents are open now. If you want to read them, you can go and read them, you know, at, under RTI they are available for you. So, it promotes transparency. Then accountability in the working of the government, that is very important. As I said, politicians are accountable because they have to come for election after 5 years. But what about the accountability during those 5 years? Can we ignore it? Can we say that now, the politicians will not be accountable and we will see them after 5 years. If we do not like them, they will lose their election. No, in a democracy as the J. Prakash Narayan said that you know the living classes, the people who are alive, you know they are not dead, they are not dead for 5 years. They are, they are very much alive during those 5 years and they must raise their voice. So, this accountability for politician is can uh, can also be managed through RTI. You can ask from your minister, you can ask from your MLA that what you have done in my area. Suppose if you believe that a particular road in your area is not properly constructed, you can go and ask your MLA and if MLA gives you some wrong answer, you just go and ask from your SDM and file an RTI 
that please tell me about this road have you done anything what is your plan blah blah is there any budget have you spent some money on it so all that information will be available and given to you so once you have that information suppose the information says that in the last year only the government spent around 2 crore rupees on that road so now you have a written document now you can go and talk to your mla sir you said that money is not there but you spent 2 crore rupees on that road so first tell me where the money went so that question will create lot of problems for your mla for your mp and politicians it's a very simple process you know if you have any problem surrounding you you just go and file an rti that please tell me what happened in this area have you spent any money do you have any plan blah 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 all that information will come to you and then you go to uh, your mla you can go to your dm you can go to your ssp you can go to any officer and say ki yeah listen i have got my rti and as per this rti you are supposed to do it but you are not doing it or you have done it tell me where is the ground reality so that accountability will come to the government Go when i say government means politicians uh, bureaucrats and judicial officers that accountability will come only when you have information okay like for example lot of people are raising a voice right now that so many millions of cases are pending in high court and supreme court okay and now the judges are taking it very seriously how it happened because someone filed an rti and they asked the court that okay please let me know how many cases are pending in district court high court and supreme court and how many years so once you have that data you can you can ask a question to even the judiciary that why you are not working or if you are working why these cases are pending can you find a solution and once they know that now the people are asking question they will start acting and now they are acting already they are they are promoting more positions they are asking lower judiciary uh, judges to work more uh, hard and they are asking them to you know finish the cases as soon as possible so this accountability will come uh, through this rti then contain corruption this is directly connected see corruption corruption can happen only when it's hidden okay once corruption is out like for example i give a very simple example like the road you believe that road is completely broken and the corrupt politicians government officers they spent 2 crore rupees on paper okay and they made some corruption it's very simple you can understand you are all smart people and the road didn't uh, improve so that's a simple very easy case of corruption so now once you have rti and you say okay last year you spent 2 crore rupees on road but i didn't say any improvement nothing happened in real life so that's a simple way to expose corruption it's very simple then you can go to social media you can go to print media digital media even you can file complain against those officers in the government in the judiciary that this is a clear cut case of corruption and action should happen against these people corruption can only survive when it is hidden if nobody knows what is going on in the government then corruption can flourish once people start knowing that corruption cannot flourish okay so this is very important and then make our democracy work for the people in real sense a democracy when it, we when we say democracy why democracy democracy is for for the people by the people okay so these three powers as i said executive legislature and judiciary they should work for people if they are not working for people then why they are there so this rti can uh make our democracy more functional okay it goes without saying that an informed citizen is better equipped to keep necessary wiggle on the instruments of the governance and make the governments more accountable to the governed okay 
the act is a big step towards making the citizen informed about the activities of the government. So, same thing you know when you say government more accountable to the governed, okay, the government should be responsible and accountable to the people. So, who is a public authority? Because RTI is available only for the government. If you want to know something private companies information, sorry you cannot file RTI. Okay. So, it is public authority, public authority means any authority or body or institution established or constituted by the by or under the constitution, by any other law made by the parliament, by any other law made by the state legislature, legislature and by notification used or order made by the appropriate government and includes any body owned control of such, uh, substantially financed non-government organization substantially financed directly or indirectly by funds provided by the appropriate government. So, you see now even some private organization can also fall under the category of public authority if they are directly or indirectly substantially financed by the government. So, like when you say added college or added hospitals, added NGOs, if government is giving money to them then it is your money then they are accountable. See, as a private person, I am not accountable to anyone. Okay, I am accountable to only law. I am only responsible to comply with rules, regulations, and laws. I am not responsible to any citizen. Whatever I do in my company or uh, in my private business, citizens have no right to know. Only government can ask me. Like, for example, income tax guys, they can ask me. Uh, and all other government agencies, environmental guys, any government agency can come and ask me how are you doing it, are you complying with rules and regulations. But the private people cannot come. So, please understand when you want to know about someone first check whether it is a public authority or not. Because until and unless someone is not public authority that authority will not come that organization will not come under RTI okay? and a person cannot say that I am a private person that is why you cannot get information if that if that organization is getting money from government substantially money like not like a small amount like you know the government gives them like suppose 1 percent or half percent of the revenue that is not a substantial but if government is paying them heavy then they are under obligation under the RTI. Okay. Now, when I say information, okay, once we settle that to whom we can ask information. Okay. So, government, semi-government, autonomous bodies and even private organization funded by the government. So, that is the criteria that these people are under obligation to give you answer. But what do you mean by information? So, information can be a record, documents, memos, opinions and advices, press releases, circulars, orders, log books, contracts, reports, paper, samples and models, data material held in any electronic form and information related to any private body which can be assessed by public authority. So, it means that this um, uh, term information is very, very, very wide. Okay. So, even suppose in there are some informal documentations happening in within the government like for example, opinions and advices. Okay. So, if, if one officer is giving some opinion on a particular matter, okay, that opinion is also available under RTI. So, anything that is happening, any documents, electronic documents or hard document within the government is available under RTI. So, I think these are very very lengthy list and it is very difficult from uh, you know for the government to hide anything until and unless it is not exempted under the RTI act. Even the private noting like in when, when you you know I, I, I just explain you that how government works little bit. So, if anything happens in government then the junior most officer may be the section officer. Uh, he writes a memo okay, noting then all senior officers they give their comments and suggestions and opinions. Okay. 
and then matter goes to minister and minister takes the final decision. Okay. So, that decision comes to public, but what happened before that decision that is very important because maybe some officer made a remark which has some value and the minister or maybe the senior bureaucrat uh, did not you know follow the right path, but a junior officer maybe made some remarks, made some comments that this is not legal, this is not appropriate, this is not good for people. You know, if he has given those comments, those comments will not come to public automatically. Only the order of the government or the minister will come to the public. So, as a citizen, you have full right to read the entire file. You, you can access the entire file that what happened, how it happened, when this entire issue started, who wrote what you know and that thing will be important because then lot of corruption can be exposed that okay, if your technical committee like for example, I gave you a very small example. Suppose if a technical committee you know, on a particular proposal, if the technical committee uh, gave a negative opinion that this should not happen. Okay. But then the senior bureau, uh, corrupt bureaucrats and uh, politicians, they uh, ignored that suggestion. They said, okay, we do not worry, we will go with that and then they issued an order. So, as a normal citizen, you will never come to know that there was a technical committee and that, that technical committee gave a negative opinion about this particular project. Okay. And ultimately, you are the, you are the party who is going to suffer. Then, if you file an RTI, you can even get that technical committee's report also. So, once you get the technical committee's report and that report is negative, you can ask your government that why you did it, what is the scientific basis of doing this particular act. So, in that scenario, any government officer, especially the bureaucrat or the even the uh, bureaucrats will uh, afraid because he, he or she may lose a job, then you can go to the court that this is clear case of corruption or the politician will also uh, afraid because uh, they lose reputation and they can lose election next time. Okay. So, very small action like all these information. So, my only point here what do you mean by information means everything, what are all the electronic documents even the emails. Okay. So, now governments are you know communicating through emails also. So, if you want to know that what officer wrote uh, to put that officer on the email, because nothing is personal in government. You need to understand students that nothing is personal in government everything is open and for the public. No officer can say, no, no, sorry, you cannot read my emails. We are not reading your personal emails. We are asking only to give information about your official email ID. So, even some sometimes they think that, okay, uh, we are just, you know, <laughs> doing the this thing. The one legal question is still, you know, it is not uh, very much explored in India. Can we ask for the WhatsApp information also, WhatsApp chatting on their official mobile? I do not know, I do not have any answer right now, but yeah, this is a very interesting point because a lot of officers are uh, chatting through WhatsApp uh, through their official mobile. Again, I am I'm saying that you cannot access their individual emails, individual WhatsApp. But if they are using official mobile, official internet, official email IDs, that info that can be available uh, to you. And why do we need RTI Act? The first thing. So RTI helps to. It's very simple. You know, we have already discussed, but I am making just them in simple points. So RTI helps to promote openness transparency and accountability in the working of every public authority, reduce corruption simple, prevent administrative arbit arbitrariness. This is very important word administrative arbitrariness. Students sometimes we think that uh, the, these politicians are running the show, no they are not running the government, 
the real people who are running the show they are the administrative people you know the bureaucrats civil servants police officers the people the you know the government officers and those people cannot take their decisions arbitrary when i say arbitrary means that in the government everything is more or less decided by rules and regulations so they must follow those rules and regulations but sometimes because of the uh, ignorance of the people you know they start taking arbitrary decisions they start taking decisions which is not supported by rules regulations and by the uh, by the principle of natural justice okay so in that scenario if they are doing something wrong like i just gave you one example that uh, in, in one case someone filed an rti that how much money you have spent on your uh, snacks you know your meeting snacks and then they found that within like uh, one month the concerned officer i don't want to name the officer but uh, concerned officer he spent more than 5 lakh rupees only on chai and samosas this is clear case of arbitrariness and corruption okay bridging the gap between providers and receptors of the public services so there is a gap you know still few officers few politicians still they think that we are living in a colonial era you know the britishers and indians okay so sometimes we call them black uh, white men you know the black black britisher no this is not the scene anymore so during the british time it was okay that uh, the british people and indian people and there has to be a gap you know but now we are all indians for the indians so in that scenario there should not be any gap between you and your ssp or your dm or your minister they are all equal as per the law and they are all serving you i know it will take time to understand uh, for indians that all these people are getting their money their resources their facilities just to serve us there is no other purpose it will take time maybe that we call them public servant but maybe it will take time in india and especially the young people i think you people can take the lead and say okay you guys are serving us okay and why rti because see if you argue with an officer okay it will not help you if you argue with an mla or a politician it will not help you but if you argue with an officer or a politician with some data information gathered through rti then those officers and those politicians are very much afraid of you then you are the master and then they are the servant if you want to control your servant you have to know about him okay you need to know what he has done what how he is doing without having information about your servant you can't control him okay and make citizens part of decision making this is very important that uh, through the rti once you are in the system you can be the part of the decision making make administrative more responsive that's very important that when you go and ask information they should give you information and they strengthen the foundation of democracy so evolution of the rta act you can see the janata government in 1997 they started this process headed by the morarji desai constitute a working gathering to discover if the official secret act on 1923 could be al- altered to encourage more not worth the stream of data to the general population so see uh, still it is their official secret act so before rti Uh, it was a general standard of the government that sorry we cannot give you this data because it's protected under the official secret act so official secret act basically enacted by the britishers just to hold the full control on the information okay so nobody should know how they are governing how they are taking their decisions so still official secret act is there and this act is basically saying that the government officers uh cannot release any official data okay so this was like by putting a prohibition or a ban on the government officers but then they said can we do it the working gathering suggested that uh, out to be held without change so nothing happened in 1997 
the 1986 again in the renowned instance of uh, Mr. Kulwal versus Jaipur Municipal Corporation, the Supreme Court gave obvious mandate that freedom of speech and expression gave under Article 19 of the Indian Constitution specifies the right to information. As without information, the freedom of speech and expression cannot be fully expressed or used by the citizen. So, that was the uh, remarkable judgment in 1986. But as you know that Supreme Court judgments, they need also some uh, support from the government. Anyway, but that was the era when Supreme Court started saying that okay, right to right to information is also part of uh, right to life uh, or right to uh, freedom of speech. Then in 1999, at the front government Prime Minister V P Singh he started this process, uh, but in any way because of the political uh, fluminess at that time, as you know, in 1990s so many Prime Ministers were coming and going. So, the thought did not emerge and V P Singh was expelled from the office. Okay. So, in 1990 they again tried the idea nothing happened. In 1994, Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sansthan began a grassroots battle for right to information. Arudanti Rai and, and some, some uh, mega, uh, mega, there are very few prominent grassroots social activists they started this idea that requesting data concerning advancement work in uh, Rajasthan. This development uh, developed and the battle brought through the administration of Rajasthan instituting a right to information in 2000. Okay. So, then few states they start thinking about it why we cannot have a right to information act. In 1995 again same thing, so this is not important. In 1997 Tamil Nadu turned into the main state in India to have passed a law on right to information. The Madhya Pradesh government issued official request to 36 divisions to actualize right to information. Okay. So, Goa law making body also established a right to information. Uh, when in 1998, when the NDA to control Prime Minister A.B. Uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee guaranteed that it will happen. In 2000, Freedom of Information Bill to 2000 was presented in Parliament. Okay. In 2002, the Honorable Pri uh, Supreme Court of India by its request dated 2nd May 2002, okay, Union of India versus Relationship for Democratic Changes and others guided that election commission to call for data on testimony by issuing vital information or request in exercise of its energy under article 324 of the constitution of the India from very hopeful looking for the race of parliament or state law making body as a fundamental piece of a selection paper. So, then the Supreme Court intervened in 2002 and asked to act for the uh, election commission. Finally, in 2005 RTI bill was passed in Lok Sabha on 11th May 2005 and in Rajya Sabha on 12th May 2005. It got consent of the president uh, on 15th June 2005 and was distributed in the Gazette of India on 21st June 2005. So, RTI Act 2005 came into compel with the impact from 12th Sept October 2005 and known as a RTI Act. Okay. So, you can see very clearly that uh, RTI Act took time, you know. You need to understand that similar type of laws were enacted in UK, USA and all developed countries 40, 50 years back. In any mature democracy, uh, without RTI, uh, we cannot have a functional democracy. But I think, you know, once we got uh, freedom in 1947 and uh, around like 2005, so you can say it took almost more than 58 years. So, it was a long time, however it happened. So, and now we are using it. So, you see the main features of this act now. The act is based on the premises that democracy requires an informed citizen, citizenry and transparency of the information. So, this is the main premises that informed citizens, pe people should be properly informed and transparency in the information. So, chap these are the chapters. Chapter 1 is entitled uh, a preliminary and explain the various terms like appropriate government, public authority, information, record, third party. 
चैप्टर टू कंटेंस ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ पब्लिक ऑथोरिटीज चैप्टर थ्री डील्स विद सेंट्रल इंफॉर्मेशन कमीशन चैप्टर फोर डिस्क्राइब द स्टेट इंफॉर्मेशन कमीशन चैप्टर फाइव इज अबाउट द पावर्स एंड फंक्शन ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन कमीशन अपील्स एंड पेनल्टीज एंड चैप्टर सिक्स हैज ऑल द मिसलेनियस थिंग्स then there are two schedules also schedule 1 contain the oath to be taken by various level of information commissioner commissioners and schedule 2 contains a list of intelligence and security organization established by central government okay so we will see now process so how it happens when you go and file an rti how it happens let's see application has to be submitted in writing with prescribed fee to the public information officer pio so in every government agency department they have to assign a particular pio so it it's a reasonably senior officer and you need to file your rti to the pio pios will be there in each department agencies to request and uh, receive request and provide uh, provide the information assistant pios will be there at the sub district levels to receive uh, so in at the state level you will have pios then they can appoint some assistant pios also information has to be provided within 30 days 40 hours where life or liberty is involved 35 days where request is given to assistant pio so this is the timeline this is the timeline they have to respect this timeline 40 days where third party is involved you know it's like they don't have this information but they have to collect from someone else and 45 days of human rights in uh, violation information from listed security intelligence agencies no action on application for 30 days is a deemed refusal so if they don't take any action it's a deemed refusal then you can go for appeal so every pio will be liable for fine of rupees 250 per day up to maximum of 25000 if they don't act not accepting your application if they don't accept your application the fine can be imposed on them and then they will give this fine from their own salary so this money will not come from the government but this money will come from their own pocket delaying information release without reasonable cause mela fidelly denying information knowingly giving incomplete incorrect misleading information destroying information that has been requested and obstructing furnishing information in any manner so that pio so now you need to understand law will not work without any deterrence if there is no penalty then why people will worry so once they start realizing that they have to pay money from their own pocket then why they will hide information you know until and unless it's not very personal to them or the order came from the top see it happens still government is trying to uh, control the information but now more or less you will see that people are not ready to take any risk they say okay i am a officer they ask me this information i am going to deliver if you don't want to deliver please give me in writing because nobody wants to pay money from their own salary second it goes to their uh, you know promotion policy also if their acr you know annual uh, career record is disturbed or lot of red entries by the these type of penalties then it creates problem for their promotions okay so obviously very few officers are ready to take risk now the information commission and at this at the central and the state level will have the power to impose these penalties okay so it's not automatically you have to go to the information commission in the state and the central and then they will impose penalty on them the information commission can also recommend disciplinary action for violate uh, for violation of the law against an uh, earning pios section 20 this is very important it's not only penalty if they believe the information commission if they believe that this officer has done something wrong as per the section 20 they can also recommend disciplinary uh, action against that particular officer and most of the time Uh, you need to understand that these information commission are very very senior people most of the time retired high court judges retired senior ias officers sometimes senior professors 
or uh, some uh, social activist. So, they are very, very senior people and they have got this power through the act. So, if they recommend something, then most of the time the department has to initiate an inquiry. Okay. So, once the inquiry starts, then the officer is knows that how it is going to happen. The information commission have the power of courts. The power of courts means like they can issue someone, someone has to appear, they, they can ask people to give their uh, statement on oath, you know. So, more or less they are acting as a court, they are not just like the, you know, tiger without teeth, you know, they have power of courts. And at the act, act established a two-tire mechanism for appeal. The first appeal lies to an officer within the organization who is senior in rank to PIO. So, if the PIO is not working, if you are not satisfied with the answer of PIO, within the department you can make an appeal. You can say, okay, your junior officer that PIO is not giving me right information, then appellate person, a very senior officer in that department, first you can go to him. Okay. And most of the time, you will get your information. If you do not get information, then you can appeal in the information commission. The jurisdiction of the local court is barred under section 20 of the act. The central state information commission has the major role in enforcing the implementation of the provision of the act as well as for the educating the parties, mainly information seekers and providers. So, local courts like the civil courts, they cannot interfere in this process because sometimes what happens when you start appealing before the state commission, the, the government or government officers, they like to go to the courts and get the stay. Okay? No, that is not possible. The local courts cannot interfere in the RTI process. It is only with the state and the central information commission. The powers vested with the information commissioners who are appointed by the president of India uh, governors of the state ensure effective implementation of the act. So, these people are appointed not by the politicians, yes indirectly they are, but directly not, directly they are appointed by the president of India and governor of that particular state. Role of central and state government develop educational programs for the public especially disadvantaged communities on RTI encourage public authorities to participate in the development and organization of such program, train officers and develop training materials, compile and uh, share the you know all these guidelines and all these things, publish names, this is important, publish names, designation, postal address and contact details of PIOs and other information such as notice regarding fees to be paid, remedies available in law if requested is rejected. So, this is the government's duty to share this information that who is the PIO, who is the appellate body, uh, the entire information should be available on website. So, if you want to file RTI in any department, you will go and find all the information. Exemptions, as I said that few organizations are exempted under RTI and you will understand very clearly why they are. Like for example, 19 government organizations are exempted from the RTA Act, like these are like the intelligence agencies like the IB, RAW, Director of Revenue Intelligence, Central Economic Intelligence Bureau. Okay. So, these intelligence agencies are exempted because obviously they are working in a very secretive manner and they are working for the national security. So, obviously we cannot expose them to public, you know, otherwise it will be not good for our country. Research bodies within the country's security and also immune to the law. It is very simple, you know, if any research organization working for the national security like the DRDO or any organization, you know, ISRO. So, these organizations, if they are working for national security projects, they are exempted. So, then Directorate of Enforcement, N Narcotics Control Bureau, Special Service Bureau, Sashastra uh, Seema Bal now we call it because they are. Uh, they are working on China and uh, uh, China and Nepal border, a special branch of the police in the Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep and so all these special branches. These organizations are however required to provide information under the act. If the panel believes that appellate query relates to the case of corruption or abuse of human rights. So, they are not exempted completely. Okay? 
but if there is a issue of corruption in that organization if there is a issue of human rights in that organization then those organizations have to give information okay so we have exempted them that we will not ask any confidential information about your day to day operations but if the corruption is happening in your organization like for example in just take the example of narcotics control bureau if we know that there is a mass level of corruption is happening okay in recruitment or in tendering suppose like the tendering like the ncb so i'm just giving the example you can take any organization here so if they are issuing a tender and if they are making a huge corruption in that trend, uh, tendering process then we can ask question if they are abusing any human right we can ask question not with standing anything in the official secret act 1923 nor any of the exemption listed above a public authority may allow access to information if public interest is disclosure outweighs the harm to the protected interest so government has more rights if they want to disclose more information they can the categories of information exempted from disclosure in this act are kept to be a bare minimum reasons for seeking information are not required to be given people belonging to below poverty line don't have to pay any fee or for seeking information so they don't ask you why you are asking this information this is not their job if you want to know something you just you want to know that how much uh, we are spending you know on our prime minister's food you know lunch you can ask they they, they won't ask you why you are asking i am just asking because i am the citizen i want to know okay same thing uh the below poverty line the poor people they don't need to pay any fee and it's very simple suppose 10 rupees 20 rupees it's not expensive but even they don't need to pay that fee also right to information is a product of both institutions and culture so without culture in the organization now it's developing it's more or less developed and the officers they do understand the value of rti institutions are shaped by laws and structure of the government culture is rooted in the history and practice of the government as well as in the broader traditional understanding of the accountability of leaders and of what constitutes representation see the culture plays an important role still uh, our indian government officers they are not very very open they are very very cooperative in rti because when i say the culture the history last 100 200 years under the british period and then post british period almost like 30 40 60 years in the absence of any law such like an rti the government senior and uh, the bureaucrats they believe that they are above the law they are above the people you know so nobody can ask them any question so it takes time but uh, you can change it and it is changing culture is more often more powerful than formal arrangements particularly in societies that are undergoing a process of democratic transition and whose political system still reflect traditional social methods of interaction so this is very important you will see that if you if you go to delhi or the state capital you will see officers are more understanding but if you go to the grassroots level still officers and the system is hesitating to give you information implementations it's not very very rosy right now because still there are so many issues uh, i don't want to talk much about it but yeah the commissioner and cic they are not hearing many cases see this was the case few years back i don't know right now how how this is happening because of corona so many things are uh, disturbed right now uh, but what we can say that still this system requires lot of changes the pios they need to change their behavior uh the central information commission they need to hire more hearings and the timing timing is very important still it's taking too much time uh, to get a judgment impact of rti before rti i'm not saying it's completely changed but i am just trying to see before rti and after uh, after rti the staff was lethargic uh, they don't they, they have no fear okay staff was not regular and punctual in their duties staff was not feeling responsibility so proper files were not maintained staff members were not conscious about their duties they were not engaged in corruption and they were engaged in corruption practices so you can see this is normal but after rti if you file an rti continuously if the empowered citizen responsible citizen 
if they start filing RTI, uh, then these changes can happen in any government system. So, the staff become more active, then they know that people are watching us, you know. So, they will come and ask again and again that, okay, last time you said that you will do it in one year, what happened? So, they have to become more active, then they, they will have a fear, fear means that they will know that people will come and ask. Earlier they thought that nobody will come and ask and we will not tell any, anybody. So, even if you are doing wrong, nothing to worry, but now they will have fear that people will ask under the RTI Act and we have to respond. They are become more regular and punctual, you can ask them ok, please uh, like I want to know about your uh, diary, I want to know your check in and check out time. So, they have to be punctual, they, they start feeling responsible. Uh, serious officers become more serious about each and every complaint. Because earlier, see, before RTI, if you think of you file and complaint, then you do not worry, okay. The officer does not worry, but now he has to worry because under RTI, you can ask me, please let me know what happened on my RTI, okay. So, these are the important cases in the UPSC Agnes Kumar AIR. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the UPSC uh, has to disclose the raw marks as well as the model answers of the questions in the examination. So, this is very important. The people said, okay, we want to see the model answers and the UPSC had to disclose. The same thing happened in the another case where the UPSC was asked to uh, showing the answer sheets to the people, you know, the, uh, the candidates. Reserve Bank of India, in this case, the Supreme Court allowed that the RBI does not place itself a fiduciary relationship with the financial institutions because the reports of the inspection, statements of the book, information relating to the business obtained by the RBI are not under the pretext of confidence or trust. In this case, so Supreme Court held very clearly you have to disclose your information to the public. So, RBI also comes under the RTI. <coughs> CBSE versus Aditya, this is very interesting case. In this case, again the issue was that I want to see my answer sheets and the CBC was saying, no, no, sorry, we cannot show the answer sheets. See, these are very simple issues, but you can understand very clearly that slowly and slowly we are forcing them that you have to open up, okay. And then Harinder Dhingra versus Bar Association, in this case the Bar Council, the Supreme Court held, no, you have to disclose information because the, the, in, uh, the person he wanted to know that how many cases are, uh, uh, you know, how many complaints are there against the advocates uh, before the BCI. So, or Bar Council of India, Medical Council of India, all councils now you can see they are under the preview of RTI. And then uh, Ahmed Evening Court, uh, in this case they said ki judicial proceedings and records are also public records and they can be disclosed to anyone. So, you the courts cannot hide their documents before the public. So, my dear students, I just wanted to finish here and I want to say one thing, RTI is simple, it is easy to implement, please use it for your society, for your family, for your country and expose corruption. Make your officers, government, government officials, politicians accountable and help the government or help the our country to create a transparent system where these people, the politicians, bureaucrats and judicial officers, they must be accountable, they must be transparent to the people and this is, this, this can happen, it just requires your time, little bit time and this is very much possible, thank you very much.